Well, hey girl, if you are struggling with trying to have joy in the midst of difficult circumstances, then let me raise my hand and say that I'm right there with you. And in today's video, that is exactly what we are going to be discussing. What is the difference between happiness and joy? And how do we just exude joy even in times where life just isn't so kind to us? So stay tuned, it's coming your way right now. Well, hey y'all, welcome back to my channel if you've been here for a bit. If you are new, I'm super pumped that you're here today. My name is Lauren and my channel is all about making beauty easy for the girl who thinks that she can't, both internally and externally. My hope today is that you will consider subscribing and hit that notification bell so that you can get alerts every single time I upload new videos, which is every single Friday, every third Thursday, and every fourth Tuesday of the month, which leads me to the introduction of this video. It is Transform Your Mind Tuesday and we are talking about some subjects that have kind of been heavy lately and they have a purpose the reason I want to talk about these things is because y'all I'm struggling like just being blatantly honest and so this month as I was preparing content for this particular topic I was praying and I was like you know what God what do you want me to do for transform your mind Tuesday because if I can be really honest with y'all transform your mind Tuesday has a very heartfelt meaning to me um, transform your mind actually came from a scripture out of the Bible uh, Romans 12 2 and it says be transformed by the renewing of your mind and the first part of that actually says do not be conformed to the patterns of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind and whether you believe in God or you serve Jesus and all of that or you don't that principle holds true whether you look at it from a secular point of view, a secular meaning non-Christian, or a Christian point of view, meaning you you actually take it to heart and you know want to be transformed by the renewing of your mind to the things of God and the things of Christ and the things of the Bible. And so really what I want to do with this segment each month is I just want to get down into the dirt with you. Um, and so what I mean by that is that I'm keeping this at my roots, like at my roots of what I'm about. And what I'm about is Jesus. And I make no bones about that on my channel. I never have. I never will. I'm not ashamed of the fact that I'm a Christian before I'm anything else. And so the truth of the matter is, though, is that even though I'm a Christian, I want to express how much I struggle with my life sometimes, just like where it's at, where it's going, what is uncertain about it and so I thought that this topic would be really good to talk about because as I mentioned last month if you um, caught the video it was all on discouragement and life's discouragements and I'm in this season right now where I'm finding myself just incredibly discouraged because there's so much uncertainty in my life right now and to be really honest I know we've done some personality typing for transform your mind Tuesday as well but part of my personality is the sense that I need certainty like it's okay to have some uncertainty in my life but when I have more uncertainty than um, certainty in my life it is very chaotic and very stressful for me and it's it's not a bad thing it's just how God wired me and so I've been trying to figure out how to actually balance that and make sure that I'm still living in a state where um, I'm giving my best in everything where I'm not allowing the discouraging situations the discouraging days sometimes weeks um, and sometimes just overall um, disheartened sadness and things of that that I feel to control my life but still be able to fill up and still be able to pour back out into other people so that I can bless other people because um, at the end of the day that's honestly what God has called me to do it's the whole reason I started my channel it's why it's not specifically based on just makeup I really want you to discover who you are internally who God made you to be I'm making no bones about it and figuring that out and learning that and then amplifying that inner spiritual being that you have that longing to be having a life that's fulfilling and do more um, and that gives you something that you can be proud of and leaves a legacy on this planet that's the desire and then that spreads out and I teach you also how to be beautiful on the outside so that's like the in a nutshell kind of what this really is so all of that to say I was figuring out some content and I'm sitting in my car again today I feel like these videos go a little bit easier for me when I'm in my car they just don't feel so like suited up and tied and I'm literally going into the gym after I film this but um I was thinking about okay we did a series at church um a couple weeks ago right before summer like officially started and it was called my joy is my job and it was a study through the book of Philippians and I actually have 
all of these notes. Oh, the rest of them were here. I have all of these notes from church and man, this sermon series just like, it was so divinely timed for me. And so I wanted to share some things with you today. If you're struggling, like if you're struggling, first of all, dealing with the fact that, you know, you sometimes have happiness, but you don't even know if you have joy because joy and happiness are not the same things. Um, or if you're in a season of life and you're like, I don't even know how to find my joy. I don't even know what that looks like anymore. Um, so I get it. So I wanted to share some things um, from the first message in this, in this sermon series. And I don't know, I haven't decided yet. And maybe you can help me down in the comments. I may want to go more deep into this topic of joy for the next the next Transform Your Mind Tuesday and talk a little bit more about the rest of the messages. Um, so some of this is going to be a review, especially if you're a Christian. Some of these things you have going to like grown up hearing, um, or if you haven't grown up in the church and you become a Christian a year ago, these are things that you're going to hear. Um, but they're all reminders, and I want to give you some action steps today too that can help you just dive back into your joy. So let's start out with a couple things here. The first thing is is that you need to know there is a difference between happiness and joy. So happiness is external. It's an emotion that you feel, but joy is actually internal. And um, that is revelational. And, and it's something that I heard years ago, but what it was revelational for me is that, you know, I'm like, yeah, I know that, right? But I realized that a lot of the stuff that um, I deal with, like my, my, hap my, my joy, what I thought was joy, was actually happiness. Because what I've discovered about myself, as I mentioned, I need certainty. And my life right now is full of so much uncertainty. And I've got things that I'm really certain about, right? You know, like Lance and I are in this amazing place in our marriage, and our life. Um, and that's a place of certainty. And man, we're clinging on to each other like nobody's business through this time that we're in. But the rest of the stuff that's uncertain is causing me and has caused me to feel down depressed even. Um, I have literally had days over the last couple weeks where it's like it took me all day to get into a good mood and to like go, okay, I'm okay. And then I was telling Lance this last night, like I would get, I would do that and then I it would be time to go to bed and I would wake up the next day with that same just heaviness and dread and ugh, just how I felt. To be honest with you, it's been hard to get on camera this month because I just haven't felt like I am in this place where I am jubilant. Ju jubilant, is that the right word? Yes, it is. And joyous. And I just haven't felt that way. And so um, I don't want to fake that, right? Um, I can't. That's not me. You guys will always be able to know. You'll see it on my face if something's wrong. Like I wear my emotions on my shoulders. I'm a deep, deep feeler, as we've discussed in other videos. And so I wear all of that on my face. And so people know if I'm not smiling, I'm not kidding. Somebody's like, what's wrong with you? And it's, sometimes it's just like, eh, I don't want to talk about it. Like, you know, or, or I don't know them well enough to talk about it. So there's that. But back to what I was saying is that happiness is external and joy is actually internal. And so the other thing that's really important to know, I'm going to set these notes here so I can see them, um, is that happiness is actually based on our circumstances and joy is actually based on Christ. And so if you're a person who doesn't serve Jesus or believe in Jesus or you haven't made it to that part of your faith journey yet, that's okay. But I just want you to understand that joy is actually a supernatural thing. And that comes with knowing and having a relationship with Christ um, that is like the basis of, um, gosh, what's the basis of my entire existence. And so um, what I realized is that through this, this big trial that we're in right now and this uncertainty, I've actually been living in a place of happiness being my indicator of whether things are okay. And that happiness has been based upon the circumstances or for me, the amount of certainty that I have within a given situation. And so um, there's a couple of scriptures that I wanted to read here that were on here. And I've got some in here that I've marked. Girl, girls, I got my Bible today. Like we are ready. Okay. Um, so Psalm 16, 11 says this, you make known to me the path of life. You fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. And that speaks to me so much because my life in Jesus isn't based on circumstances. And at one time I believed that life with Jesus was just going to be easier than life without. Now, what I mean by that is that I would have less conflict in things in my life. Well, that's not biblical, first of all. So if anyone's ever told you that being a Christian was going to be easier, girl, they lied to you because it is not. Um, the Bible actually says that <clears throat> the rain falls on the righteous and the unrighteous. And that's just fancy terminology, meaning that there's trouble in this world. Um, and it's going to happen to everybody. No matter who you are, you're going to experience tragedy in life. You're going to experience struggle in life. And you have to be in a place in your brain and your heart where 
you're not so like affected by your circumstances that you're on a roller coaster all the time because that's what happens if you are focusing on only happiness or your circumstances have to be just right that temperature gauge has to be just high enough at the perfect temperature for you to be in a place where you exude joy out of your life and so I say that because it's something that I've been struggling with um, and just being in a place where I'm like no you know what I'm gonna be joyful today so that brings me to the next thing that we talked about at church and it was that happiness happens by chance or for me it happens by circumstances being good all the little check boxes and I have a lot of check boxes in my life but all of them are you know checked off green that they're good <clears throat> and when one of those like key fundamentals is not checked off then that means that my happiness wavers but joy is actually a choice and I literally have to get up every day and choose to find joy in the midst of circumstances that suck, amidst circumstances that are hard, amidst moments where I'm like, okay, we have a decision to make here and God, we have to come before you and pray and then we have to wait on you, which can I just be honest and say that I hate waiting on God? I really do because I am one of those people who's just like a doer and you know, if something's you know wrong, I need to fix it and get it taken care of. And God just doesn't work that way. And it's great because I know it teaches me something. I know Jesus, but it just doesn't always feel that way. And so joy happens by choice. And as I mentioned a few minutes ago, when I talked about, you know, the Bible says that the rain falls on the righteous and the unrighteous. The Bible also says that, um, you know, take heart because while you're going to experience trouble in this world, this is what Jesus promised us. You're going to experience trouble in this world, but I want you to take heart because I overcame it. I overcame the world. I overcame all of it. And what that means is that he did that by coming down from heaven, like choosing to be one of us, a human being, experience all of our emotions, all of our pain. He's, he's been there. He's felt it all, all the temptation. And his vision was so much bigger than the stuff going on around him, the circumstances in his life, because he knew that he came to die on that cross. That was where his, like, he was focused and zeroed in on that mission and nothing could pull him away from that. That's what he focused on because that was his fulfillment plan. And I can't even imagine if that was my fulfillment plan. Like God said, Lauren, guess what you get to do? You, I'm going to send you to earth. You're going to be born. And your whole life is going to be based on the fact that you're going to die on a cross. It's going to be brutally painful, but you're going to save the planet. Like you're going to, you're going to reconcile humanity to me by your sacrifice. Um, I would have been like, I'm bailing on that. That's not going to be cool because not everybody's going to believe that. Not everyone's going to accept it. I just couldn't even imagine. So I can't wait to get to heaven and ask Jesus, like, can I be honest with you, Jesus? I know you had to be thinking some things. And he, the Bible does talk about that. There was a moment where he was praying, like, God, if you will just take this from me. I just take this from me. Like, he didn't want to do it. And then he said, but your will be done. So um, it's a choice. And Jesus chose to live joyfully and continue his ministry on planet Earth with his decision about being joyful in the midst of, of trial and circumstance. And so here's some things that you can do. And I'm going to fold this so I can see it because it's not really staying up on my steering wheel. Okay. So what, what we have on my notes here, it says, um, don't let the things you can't control control you. Oh, and I've been doing that so much lately. Like there's so much about life right now that I can't control. In fact, it's out of my control. And if anything, I have got to let God do what he does and move mountains in my life that I can't move. So, you know, growing up, we always heard this, um, this term, this phrase, um, you know, do all you can do and then stand. And the Bible actually says in Exodus 14, 14, it says, um, it says, um, uh, uh, God will fight for you. You only need to be still. And so that to me, is just like that verse just reminds me of the fact that God expects me to do what I can in the natural to, you know, rid myself of, of certain situations, do whatever I can. But at the end of the day, like I'm, I'm limited. I only have, I have limitations as a human being. And at the end of the day, that means that God has to come in and move mountains in my life that I couldn't move if I tried. Right. Um, so it's really important that we don't allow the things that we cannot control to control how we feel, how we act, um, how we interact with people um, and control our moods. And I'm so guilty of that because I'm just like, I get in this, this headspace of like, when is this ever going to change? And then let me be honest with you. Here's my biggest fear. What if it doesn't? That's the one that keeps me up at night. What if I work so hard for this very, very thing <clears throat> and it never pans out, you know, or maybe it's, you're in a relationship right now and that relationship is very broken 
and you're trying to, to make it survive. Maybe it's a marriage. I don't know. And you're like, what if I give it my all, but he still leaves? And the answer is, I don't know. But God is asking you to do all you can do to stand and to trust that what he says in Romans 8, 28, which is he works all things out for our good, for those who are called and loved, I'm sorry, those who are, he loves and who are called according to his purpose. And what that means is that, yes, is the road going to be easy? No. It means you can have assurance knowing that God's going to work everything out for you. But what I really challenge you to do is that if your relationship with God is kind of like on the fritz right now, or you're even trying to figure it all out, I would challenge you to, to, to take five minutes every day and just begin to pray and talk to God about drawing closer. And one of the prayers that I always pray because there are times in my life, and if you're a Christian, you can relate to this. And, um, you know, even if you're not, I'm sure you can relate to this too. But there are times in my life where I'm just like, are you even there? I don't feel your presence right now. And so I literally will pray, because it even says it's in the Bible, draw close to me so that I can draw near to you. Draw, like, draw me close to your heart, God. Like, literally let our hearts line up and be one. And it's something that I pray all the time. And I notice that when I start to do that and I'm getting in my word and I'm, I'm praying and I'm, I'm literally sometimes pray the scriptures. And sometimes I do that. And I'm like reminding God, like, God, your word says this. I know you don't break your promises. The word says that nothing you say ever comes out void. And so when the Bible says this in this passage, I'm trusting that it's going to be true, that it's going to come to fruition, that it's a promise for me in this day and age, that this book isn't old and it doesn't not apply to me. And it, you know, I, like I literally claim these scriptures. Um, and so <clears throat> I want you to get in that headspace. And the, the first, first thing or second thing, wherever we're at here, you got to stop asking why. We're never going to get anywhere with that question, guys. To be honest with you, there's just some things that we're never going to know on this side of eternity. I have so many questions for God. There's things in this book that are hard for me um, to swallow. There's things in this book that I'm like, wow, why did he choose to do it that way? How can he be this, but this is what happened? Like, I, I be very honest with you. I struggle with those things. But what I chalked it up to is that I'm a human being and I have a mind that, you know, is just here on this planet and God is infinite. Like I have a finite mind, a finite body, a finite everything and God is infinite. And so I have to trust that just as I can't see the wind and just as there's things about this planet that are anomalies that I don't understand, that probably means, and I'm not arrogant enough to say that I should be able to understand everything about God and still, you know, and not be able to trust him. Because the truth of the matter is he's done so much in my life. And again, I've said this in another video, but there's lots of stuff you guys don't know about my story here on YouTube, and I'm not sure how that's going to work with me sharing and all of that platform, but I am so aware of how present God has been in my life. And I've seen miracles in my life. I've seen like things that should not have happened happen in my life because of nothing else other than the hand of God. So stop asking why, and let's start asking what. That's the second part of this. So what that means is, and here's what we have here in, in the notes, is every bad day is a new opportunity to be discovered. So start asking what you can do to change your mood, to change where you're at. What can you focus on even in the midst of this struggle or this tragedy that you're walking through? What can you focus on to be grateful for? Um, for me, sometimes I just am grateful for the smallest things that I take for granted every day. Like the other day I woke up and, you know, I was sitting on the, on the couch and I was drinking my coffee and reading the Bible. And I try to start every time I pray, I really try to start out with things that I'm grateful for because it gets me in this space with God where I can approach him from an, um, an attitude of, of gratefulness um, before I start expressing all of my concerns. Like, oh God, I'm so grateful that, you know, I have this. And I looked out on the lanai and all three of my cats were out there and they are old y'all. Like, in fact, Max shouldn't be here because he had a stroke at the beginning of the year and the vet said he was going to die. We literally prayed over him, laid hands on him, anointed him with oil. That's also biblical. And Max is alive and walking and healthy um, and Sally is still alive and Harry who we're convinced that Harry has nine lives because he's alive and he's looks old and decrepit but he's still here and I looked out there and I, they were just out there enjoying the morning sun and what little breeze was coming in from the hot humid morning and I just said thank you God that I get to wake up and have another day with these three cats because I know my days are numbered with them right but it's something that I have to be grateful for thank you God that I'm sitting on my couch and it's nine o'clock in the morning and I don't have to go somewhere to work because this is what I get to do. Um, thank you that I have, you know, this relationship with my husband that is so awesome. And we've worked through some of the hardest things that two people could ever have to face. 
and we've made it through and we're better off for it. Like all these different things that I was thinking about and praying for. And so, um, the third thing is to refocus on what really matters. And that's kind of where the gratitude comes in at. So when you're focusing in on what really matters in your life, it's kind of like you can get to this place where the stuff that you're uncertain about or the situations that you're struggling with, you're not going to be, you won't be as focused on those things because the truth of the matter is like what you give energy to, what you give thought to is where you're going to stay at. So if we're in this space and I got to drink a little pre-workout here because it's, I need to get this going. If we're in this space where we're constantly, um, we're constantly thinking about all the things that are missing or the what ifs or all of those things. And that's all our mind is going to, going to focus on. And to be honest, <clears throat> the Bible also says that so a man thinketh so, or as a man thinketh, so is he. So what that really means is, and every person that is in any self-development or mindset teaching or anything like that, this can be, a, it's, you know, people use this as a secular concept, but it is biblical. It simply means this, what you meditate on, what you think about is what you become. And so we need to be focusing on the things that we're grateful for because when we do that, when we start to really make a list, and that's what my challenge is for you to do, make a list. When we do that, all of a sudden our focus and our, our thoughts and everything else starts to shift. And now we're not focusing on this problem over here. We're actually focusing on all this stuff over here. And somehow what happens is, is that your subconscious mind, this is the beauty of how God created us, your conscious mind relaxes, first of all, because your conscious mind is always trying to solve the problems. And then your subconscious goes to work. And all of a sudden, you're going to come up with an idea or somebody's going to approach you about something and someone's going to walk into your life who is going to give you a, a tidbit that's going to change your life. I don't know what it could be. But that's what happens because our focus completely changes and completely shifts. And so that was kind of like the essence of this particular message, which was, you know, happiness versus joy. And as you can see, one is, is a lot more work. It does take work to, um, you know, to have joy and to choose joy in the midst of things that are painful. Um, but let me read this scripture to you. And it's out of James, James 1 verses 2 through 4. And it says, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind, any, any kind, right? Come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. And man, that is huge to me because when we're tested like this, it really is an opportunity for growth. So not only are we going through it, but as my friend um, from church said, you're actually growing through it. And she's like, I know that might sound corny. No, it does not sound corny. We're going through it and we're growing through it. And that's the idea because God has a place for you. And let's just say God needs you to be here before you can get to this certain place in your life where you're really going to be fulfilling your purpose and you're here. There we go. That looks better. And you have to go through some things so that you can actually, you know, get some strength and build up and, you know, your faith increases. It's kind of like working out. Like, you want to look a certain way, you want to have all this muscle, but you have to put in the work, right? And so that's kind of what these challenges do for us. And I was telling my girlfriend, I was like, you know, I get frustrated with myself and I don't give myself enough grace um, because she encouraged me to give myself grace. I was like, I face situations that are far harder than what I am going through right now. And I handled those like an absolute champ because I was so close and connected with God and I was so uncertain during that time of my life, but I trusted that God was gonna work everything out. No matter what choice I made, no matter what decisions came out of it, I was so just in tune with everything about God in my life at that time. And this situation is far less harder and it's been far harder for me to make that same commitment. And so I'm struggling through that. So. I hope this encourages you today. And the last verse that I want to give you, and then I'll close out this video, is Isaiah 43, 2 through 5. And it says this, When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. For the flames will not consume you. Consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. And I've been standing on this verse, reminding myself that God says he's going to be there when I go through the water 
the deep water, through the river of difficulty. When I walk through the fire, it's not gonna consume me or burn me up. And I want you to notice the keys here. It says through. It doesn't say around. It doesn't say over. It doesn't say any of that. It says through. And a lot of times, the hardest things in our life turn out to be the biggest places where God uses us for his own glory and uses us um, for testimony purposes to help other people's lives. And I definitely know that's the calling on mine, especially um, with the things that I've overcome um, over the last four and five years and just what I've personally walked through and, and um, grew from. And so I hope this encourages you today. I hope that you realize that, again, you're not alone. And um, if you're going through a lot right now and joy is hard for you, all I'm saying to you is just start to make the effort to choose it. And I think it starts with gratitude and um, it'll morph more from that. So my question for you down in the comments is, do you want to keep talking about this? Like, should we go and dive a little bit deeper into joy and ways that we can find joy? Uh, Cause I've got a lot of notes here. Let me know. I would love to hear from you. And if you haven't had a chance to subscribe to my channel, go ahead and do that now so that you don't miss out on any future videos. And of course, follow me on social media, connect with me. I love to connect with you on social media. If you need me to pray for something, um, that's a great way to connect with me. If you don't want to drop stuff in the comments, if it feels too personal, since those comments are public, I totally understand. And I think that's going to be a wrap for today. So God bless you. Thank you for joining in with me. And um, I look forward to hearing from each and every one of you in the comments and connecting with you. That's it. I'll see you next time. Hashtag Reform Tomboy Family. I'll see you soon.